If you look into accessing your NAS, Docker containers, or just about any home lab service remotely, the overwhelming response you'll receive is to use a VPN. Whether the VPN is a self-hosted option like OpenVPN or WireGuard, or a zero config option like Telscale, it's a secure way to access your services, which makes it easy to recommend. The downside of VPNs though is accessibility, since you have to download the VPN application, sign in, then connect to the VPN before accessing your services. To increase accessibility, you generally have to look into options that require port forwarding, which many people view as an insecure or at least a more insecure way of accessing your services than a VPN. But what if there was a way to access your services without connecting to a VPN, requiring no port forwarding and keeping security at the forefront? That's where Cloudflare tunnels come in. So in this video, we're gonna configure a domain on Cloudflare and securely expose a Synology NAS so that we can access it anywhere in the world. To configure this, you'll need your own domain. So I purchased a domain using Namecheap and we're first gonna connect it to Cloudflare and then configure our Cloudflare tunnel. One massive disclaimer though, in order to use Cloudflare tunnels, you have to input a credit card on the Cloudflare tunnel side. It's totally free, but it is a requirement. So if you don't wanna do that, you won't be able to use Cloudflare tunnels. So let's look at configuring our domain. Okay, so up to this point, all I did was purchase a new domain on Namecheap. And then what I did is log into Cloudflare and I'm gonna be adding a new website to Cloudflare. So as soon as you get to this page, this is the page where you will add your new website. What I'm gonna do is type in the domain. And as soon as you do that, you can select continue. And then what it's going to do is ask you if you wanna pay. Now we're gonna use the free option here and then we can select continue. So it's gonna scan our domain for any DNS records. And this is basically everything that comes default if you were to purchase a domain from Namecheap. So I'm just gonna select continue here. And then at this point, we have to change our name servers. So when you change your name servers, ultimately what you're doing is you're just allowing Cloudflare to manage your domain. So what you'll see here is that if we scroll down, we have two name servers here that we have to assign inside of Namecheap. So what we'll do is we'll click copy and it's extremely easy on the Namecheap side. If you're using a different domain registrar, you'll have to figure out how to do it on that one, but I'm sure there's tons of different information if you Google it. But on here, all you have to do is change name servers to custom. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna paste in the two name servers here that we got from here. And at that point, all we have to do is save it. So what you'll see is in a second here, our name servers are going to be defined. And now what you have to do is wait. So this will take anywhere from roughly, let's say five to 15 minutes. But after that, you'll be able to manage your domain inside of Cloudflare. So we will be back once that's done. Okay, so I just got the email that it is good to go. So if I click check name servers now, it should check the name server. And if we select continue here, we should be able to get started. So we're gonna go through this. And by the time we go through this, this should be complete. So we're gonna select get started here. And this is just gonna be Cloudflare settings. So whatever you configure here, it can be changed at a later time. So just be aware of that. So we'll leave this on, we will go to the summary and then we'll select finish here. And at this point, if we refresh here, we should see, yep, Cloudflare is set up and configured. Okay, so right now we're managing our domain through Cloudflare. If you go to DNS here, you can create DNS record. You can do just about everything that you would have done through Namecheap, but you're gonna be using Cloudflare. Cloudflare is extremely powerful. There are a lot of security controls. So if you're managing something externally, you're gonna have a lot of settings here that you wouldn't traditionally have, but this is not a Cloudflare video in that regard. If you wanna see something like that, leave a comment. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the homepage here and then we're gonna select this zero trust here. Like I said earlier, you will have to input a credit card here if you haven't done that yet. So I did that already, but this is the main Cloudflare tunnels page. So what we're gonna do here is we are gonna configure a tunnel. So under networks, if you select tunnels, we have to add a tunnel and we are gonna use Cloudflare. And then you have to give it a name and then you can save the tunnel. And then what you'll see here is you will have various different options for actually running this uh, tunnel. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna use Docker here. So inside of here, you're gonna see a Docker run command. We're gonna copy that, but we're actually not gonna use a Docker run command. So what I have here is a Docker Compose template you can use. I will leave a link to it in the description. But we're gonna use this so that we can utilize Docker Compose inside a container manager. So the only thing we actually need from this is this token here. And I'm just gonna copy the token from here and I'm going to paste it here into our Docker Compose file. 
So at that point, we can copy this and then we're gonna move over to Container Manager. And inside of the Project tab, what we're gonna do is we are going to create a new project for Cloudflare. Now we need a path, so inside of File Station, I will come in here and I will create a new folder. We will pick that folder and then we are going to create a Docker Compose file. So inside of this, this is the Cloudflare Docker Compose file that will connect our local network to Cloudflare. So we're gonna select next, next, done, and then it will pull the container. And in a second here, once that's done, we should be able to go back to Cloudflare and see that the tunnel is active. Okay, so it was successfully built and you will see that our container is running. So if we go back into Cloudflare here, you will see that we are now connected. So we have our local network connected to Cloudflare, the tunnel is configured. So what we're gonna do is select next, and this is where we can go in and we can actually expose different services. So remember, this is going to basically allow this service to be accessible outside of your local network utilizing Cloudflare tunnels without actually port forwarding or anything like that. So the first thing that we're gonna set up is this NAS. I think that makes the most sense. So we're gonna set it as NAS dot our domain. And then what you'll see is this is the IP address and port. So we're gonna use HTTPS and then we are going to paste that in. Now, because we're using HTTPS and this is a self-signed certificate, we're gonna expand TLS here and we are gonna enable this so that it doesn't verify the certificate and then we can save this tunnel. That is our first tunnel at this point. So if we open up a private window and we go to that page, you will see that we're brought to our service and we have a valid certificate. So let's do that for another service. So I have a test environment for Uptime Kuma configured and we will expose this. So we're gonna copy this here. This utilizes HTTP. So what we are going to do is select our Tunnel name, we're gonna select edit here. And then in the public host name here, we're gonna add a new public host name. You can paste that in, it's HTTP, and give it a subdomain and the domain you'd like to use. And then you can save the host name. And if we go to that in our private window here, you will see that we are brought to Uptime Kumo. So we configured a Cloudflare tunnel. We have set up a few different hosts and basically it functions kind of like a reverse proxy. Think of it as a reverse proxy that you're managing through Cloudflare, if you've ever used a reverse proxy, but rather than port forwarding and actually configuring your hosts on an internal server, you're doing it through Cloudflare. So that's done, but there's no security behind this. So if you try and actually access any of these services, you will be brought directly to the login page. So we're gonna add some authentication in front of that. So you'll have to authenticate with Cloudflare first, and then you will be able to actually access these services. So what we're gonna do is inside of the settings, I just wanna show you this, we're not actually gonna configure anything here, but inside of the authentication here, the login method we're currently using is one-time pin but you can add a new one and there are a bunch of different options here. The downside is that these are generally used, I feel like for enterprises. So Azure Active Directory, that's generally used in the enterprise environment. Same thing with Google Workspace, Facebook, it would be on the development side. So most people are not gonna actually be able to use any of these. One of the interesting ones is Google. So if you wanna log in with Google accounts, you can configure that. The downside is you have to do it through the Google Cloud platform. The point is you can use any of these authentication protocols if you would like with the understanding that this is generally enterprise stuff, but the one-time pin works and it works extremely well. So if you wanna configure any of these, when you come to this page, there will be full instructions on exactly how you can configure and use these if you're interested, but we're just gonna use this one-time pin. So now that that's done, what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna create a few access groups. I like to do it this way because based on the services that you wanna use, you might have different groups of users. So this will make more sense in a second here, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a group here and I'm just gonna call this group name my users and we'll set this as a default. In this include section here, this is what you are going to include. These are the users that you will include for this specific access group. So for example, if you have your own custom domain, you can configure it like this. So I own the domain wondertech.net, any emails ending in at wondertech.net will be allowed access to this specific group. Alternatively, you can go in and specify individual email addresses. So if you have a core set of users that will have access to a lot of these services and you only wanna expose those services to those specific users, you can come in here and add all of their individual email addresses here. So at that point, you would have all your individual email addresses and this group would be defined for those individual users. For now, all I'm gonna do is select my domain and emails ending in, and this is gonna be the default group. 
So we're going to save that and we're going to add another group. And the reason I like to do this is because there are potentially services that you may not want authentication in front of. So I will show the authentication in a second here. So for this group, what we're going to do is we're going to name it my country. And then we're going to select the country option. I'm going to search for my country and I'm going to save this. So what we have is we have two groups. We have the users that will end in my domain or the email addresses that you specify. And we have my entire country. So I'm going to show you how this works. The reason I like to use my country is because if you want to expose this, you're generally going to be exposing it to users inside of your country. If it's not only users inside of your country, you can select multiple countries based on wherever those users are located. So now that that is done, what we're actually going to do is we're going to configure this for our actual services. So inside the applications here, we're going to add an application and we're going to select self-hosted. And the application name for this is just going to be our NAS. The session duration, you can uh, configure this based on whatever settings you actually want. I'll leave it at 24 hours. But the, the subdomain here. Now, you can use a wildcard if you'd like. So let's assume that you only wanted to set up one access group and you wanted it to apply to every single one of your actual services. You could specify a wildcard and then at that point, every single one of those services that you specified, so in our case, NAS and Uptime Kuma, would use these specific access control policies. For me, I'm gonna split it up into two to show you how it works. So I'm just gonna enter in NAS here. And then what I'm gonna do is there's an app launcher. If you want, you can even upload your own application logo. I'm going to leave this all as default. You could determine what happens if someone gets blocked. But inside of this identity providers, this is the only other section you're gonna to wanna to look at. If you have multiple identity providers that you configured, so if you configured Google, if you configured Azure AD, you can disable this and you can pick what option you wanna use for this individual service. For me, I'm just gonna leave this as all available and then I'm gonna select next here. And then we have to enter a policy name for this. So I'm just gonna give it a policy name and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna select my users here. And then all these other settings can be modified, but we're gonna leave them as default. Same with all of this. And then we're gonna add the application. Okay, so now that we configured our NAS, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a second application for Uptime Kuma. So we're gonna select self-hosted and then we're gonna fill out the application configuration the same way we did before, but just use Uptime Kuma. And we are going to go through here. We can leave all this as default and we're gonna select next. And this is gonna be the policy that we're gonna use for Uptime Kuma. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a policy name. I am going to change the action here to bypass. This is the big piece here. And then what we're gonna do is select my country and then you can create additional rules if you would like and then you can select next and then add application. And at this point, I will show you how this works. So the only other thing I wanna mention is we generally focused inside of our access group on actual include rules but there are exclude rules as well. So you can exclude specific uh, authentication methods and countries and stuff like that. So generally rules, either access groups or actual security policies are configured with include and exclude rules, but it generally depends on the service. So just keep that in mind. Now that this is done, let's look at how this actually works. So in a private window, I'm gonna go to NAS and then our domain. And if we select enter here, what you will see is we will have access to our actual service, but we have to go through the authentication process first. So I just sent myself a code using the actual domain that we had configured for that policy. And if I enter in that code that I was just emailed and click sign in, you will see that I am brought directly then to the NAS. So earlier, we accessed this service directly. Now you have to actually authenticate inside of Cloudflare and then authenticate inside of the NAS. So there's two layers of authentication here. You still have to authenticate on the NAS itself, but you have to authenticate into Cloudflare first. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is that's for the NAS. But remember, for Uptime Kuma, what we did is we configured a bypass rule. So if I access this service here, we're actually gonna get brought directly to Uptime Kuma. And the reason is because we are inside of my country. So remember, for that actual access policy, in the policy itself, what we did is we created a bypass action. The bypass will bypass all forms of authentication, but we limited it down to our individual country. So what I'll do at this point is I'll connect to a VPN and I'll overlay what it would show if you actually tried to access this service in a separate country. And in summary, it's just gonna block it. So that is a very high level overview. There is a lot more to this 
in terms of actual Cloudflare tunnels and a lot of cool things that you can do. And if there's any interest in seeing that, leave a comment because I'm not sure how much interest there is in this topic in general. I'll leave a comment and there's just a few other things that I wanna actually talk through in terms of Cloudflare tunnels. So that is how you can use Cloudflare tunnels to securely access your services. Before we finish, I wanna mention something about privacy because it is very important. With this setup, Cloudflare is basically sitting in the middle and has full visibility of everything going on. It's recommended to use network segmentation if you can, which basically means creating a separate VLAN so the Cloudflare tunnel can only access devices on that VLAN. But not everyone will be able to do that due to networking requirements. There is a full and awesome video on some of the privacy concerns about Cloudflare tunnels from Christian Lempa that I'll link in the description. And if this concerns you at all, watch his video because he does an amazing job of explaining it. Other than that, you can create and access as many services as you'd like. And while the Cloudflare authentication might not be as easily accessible to users as something like port forwarding is, you technically don't have to require authentication like we did with that bypass rule, though you probably should. I hope this video helped you out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.